everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrew. This week, I wanted to sort of combine a couple of 2020 trends and bring it into 2021. So I'm thinking a little bit about the shirt that was like cut down the center, two different t-shirts put together, that kind of deconstructed look. And then also that like inside out, overlocked, super tight tee that seemed to be around the internet. Yeah, I want to pull from that kind of imagery, but make it a little bit my own with more of like a motocross style detail and some color blocking, little sneak peek here. Yeah, so let's jump on in. I started as I often do with tons of sketches to try to capture the design that I wanted. The key things I was looking for with this one were bold color blocks, biker style lines, and an off-the-shoulder raglan kimono type sleeve. Once my design felt ready, I grabbed some scrap cardboard and a t-shirt that I wanted to trace. Even though I want the style of the shirt to be more oversized, I traced my design lines along this fitted tee since I would be using it to cut out my mock-up. This might have been a bad idea. Luckily, my pattern was quite adaptable later. I started in the center, sketching the center panel along the fold, then continued the line up onto the sleeve. From there, I just added a few extra lines to break up the sleeve and add detail. Once my pattern was complete, I did a mock-up in solid white to test the pattern and learn more about the fit, since I had a lot of white t-shirts on hand. It worked out really great, and although the fit was a bit tighter than I'd wanted for myself, it looks perfect on my female form, so maybe it's more of a women's shirt. Surprise! Now it was time to cut the shirts that I thrifted specifically for this project. I was looking for strong colors and graphics, and most of these shirts are large or extra large, so that gives me some more fabric to work with. Before cutting, I laid the shirt as flat as possible with the side and shoulder seams lined up. This was honestly one of the trickiest parts of the process because the shirt did not want to lay flat and it kept twisting and ugh. I traced my pattern pieces with chalk and made sure to pin the front and back layers together before cutting through both layers at the same time. For the back of the center panel, I extended the diagonal cuts up to the collar and then cut along the collar to remove the shoulders. It's worth noting at this point that although this project is certainly not zero waste, I did go out of my way to try to get the most out of every shirt. It would have been easy to chop one or two pieces out of each shirt and end up with something perfectly consistent to my pattern. However, I just hate wasting good materials like that, so I really tried to adjust the placement and the lengths of the pattern pieces to utilize each shirt to its fullest. This meant that some pieces had the center panel cut first to make that wider, and other pieces had the side panels cut first to make those wider, depending on how much fabric I felt I needed and how I thought they would fit together. I just cut the sleeve pieces wherever I could. I actually cut the sleeve pieces a little bit longer so that I would have more options in terms of fit. I also experimented a bit with the rotary cutter and mat that I borrowed from my mom to cut some of the smaller pieces. It was nice to be able to keep everything lying really flat without having to kind of get the scissors up in there, so I'll probably be trying this a little bit more in the future. I finished prepping the side panel by ripping open the seams at the end of the sleeve. Cutting done. To assemble, I start by attaching the sleeve stripe to the two diagonal sleeve pieces. Since I want that deconstructed look, I'm pinning and sewing the wrong sides together. This took me a minute to get used to on my mock-up since I'm really accustomed to putting right sides together. I definitely had to rip out and re-sew more than once. Old habits, right? Next, I add the lower sleeve pieces. At all of the intersections, I had to make a decision about which way to fold the seam allowances. 
Most of the time, this was an arbitrary design choice, but other times certain decisions were necessary to make things work, particularly at the front of the collar. Now we can stitch the diagonal sleeve pieces to the diagonal cut on the center piece. It's important to line up the outside edges first and then work in toward the collar. That way everything will be lined up when we attach the sides. I ran into some super annoying issues sewing jerseys, so here are a couple tips I picked up through research and trial and error. Stretch fabrics like jersey are usually better sewn with a serger or some sort of stretch stitch. Since I wanted the raw edges and I couldn't find my overlock foot and I don't have a straight, 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 straight stretch stitch and I don't have a straight stretch stitch on my machine, I ended up sewing everything with a basic straight stitch. This worked fine for this design since the fit is loose, so you can easily get in and out of the garment without straining the stitches. However, I did find it necessary to switch from a cotton thread to a polyester thread, as is recommended for knits, since I was having issues with the fabric wanting to gather up with the cotton thread. Even still, I have to take my time and work to keep the fabric flat, but in the end, my seams worked out quite nicely. I now pin the side panels to the center, starting at the end of the sleeve, lining up my upper sleeve piece with the raw edge that I got from opening up the seam in the lower sleeve piece. From here, I pin all the way along the big curve, keeping both sides relaxed and unstretched. Same thing on the back. Here you can see I pinned both the front and back together before sewing anything to make sure the fit was going to work. All good. Now I sew these closed. When pinning the second side, I measure to make sure that there is the same amount of difference at the bottom edge. We want to keep as much symmetry here as possible. To attach the collar to the sleeves, I put the shirt on my form and laid all the raw edges under the collar piece. On this shirt and on my mock-up, I found it was necessary to cut the collar off the back entirely to allow the collar to be distributed more evenly. Once this is done, I can spread the collar out evenly and check the symmetry and then pin all the way around. Then I attach it by top stitching along the existing seam lines wherever I can. If you have any tips or experience with sewing stretched fabric, be sure to leave those in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I turn under the sleeves following the existing creases from where the lower sleeve was turned under before, and sew all the way around. Finally, I found that the discrepancies in length at the bottom can vary depending on the size of the shirts and how they're cut. On my mock-up, the shirts were the same size, and I cut my pattern exactly as is, so the ends were almost even. For this shirt, I cut it much wider and lengthen the sleeves, making the sides much shorter. Since I wasn't feeling the loincloth vibes, I opted to cut off the bottom hem and top stitch it higher to mirror the look of the collar. Then I cut off the excess to finish it off. Okay, so originally I had intended to sew more than one shirt so I could show you how I was combining the different shirts together and sort of mixing and matching and making the pieces work together and I ended up cutting a bunch of pieces. However, um, last night my machine decided to become really uncooperative and I'm having some tension issues with the bobbin. You can see here with the neon yellow thread, it looks pretty decent on top some of the time, but then back behind it's like that the burgundy thread is like completely tight and the, the yellow is pulling through. And no matter how much I've adjusted my settings on my upper thread, it doesn't seem to modify that tension balance at all. Um, so I'm looking into adjusting the bobbin tension. If you guys have any suggestions or have dealt with this kind of tension issue before, please let me know. I need your help. Let me know in the comments. In any case, you can see here what would have been. I had this shirt coming in with the pink on the sides. And I also cut these two other shirts as well. Uh, what could have been 